today to you from what we know in our um, Sunday school as our closing work. As our closing work. Uh, if you're in Sunday school or if you join us for Sunday school, um, you, you know that at the end of Sunday school we do this thing, it's called our closing work. And part of our closing work uh, is a scripture that is usually read. Thank you so much. Is a scripture that's usually read. Uh, glory. Oh, that's better. It's a scripture that's usually read. And um, it comes from 2 Corinthians. Mm. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I just want to touch on this a little bit this morning. We, uh, we attended to Wisdom for a couple of weeks. We talked about um, wisdom as it relates to soul winning, that that is the highest use of wisdom is winning souls for the Lord. And um, and we talked before that we talked about wisdom as being able to understand that God is always up to something good. Amen. That God is always up to something good. Today we want to draw your attention to this idea in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, uh, very briefly, because I know um, many of you have got things to do. If your power's out, um, uh, there are other chores that we have to do because the trees are down. Um, so we're, it's not our intent to keep you long, but I just want to give you a little something to... Um, <coughs> To, to snack on. Amen. And so <clears throat> we read in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Amen. And this is intended, um, this is intended for everyone, but I really want my young people, my young adults, and my youth, amen, to uh, grab a hold to this. It says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So then I want to skip down to the 14th verse. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I want to skip down to the 16th verse where it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. 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 And I want to just use as a as a thought this morning this idea in the 16th verse. 
don't lose heart. Do not lose heart. Or as it is in the King James translation, for which cause we faint not. Don't lose heart. Faint not. Amen. Don't lose heart. And don't faint. As the Apostle Paul is talking to the church in Corinthians, he is, by the time we get to the 16th verse, he's encouraging them not to lose heart. He's encouraging them not to faint. Because in the verses beforehand, he has basically told them that the challenge that we have as Christians, young people, the challenge that we have as Christians, young adults, the challenge that we have as Christians, senior adults, and middle-aged adults, the challenge that we have as Christians is that we have a treasure, amen, that God has given us, amen, which is this, this light of this knowledge of Jesus Christ, and it is a treasure that he has given us and that he has hidden, right, in these, these earthen vessels. Glory be to God. It is a treasure, amen, that he has hidden in these earthen vessels. And the Bible says that it was hidden in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Well. Amen. Glory be to God. And so, and so when we look at the fact that we have the light of of the knowledge of God, amen, this indistinguishable light, amen, this, this, this wonderful light, amen, this uh, 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 eternal light, this powerful light, amen, the fact that we have, amen, this light in us, amen, it is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ, amen, the fact that we have this light in us, amen, uh, 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 is, a, is, is, is such a powerful thing to carry, amen, that at the end of the day, once we have carried it, what we realize is that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us, amen. Amen. Excuse me for one second. All right. All right. So the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. Sorry about that. The glare was just uh, distracting me. And so, and so Paul breaks it down to the church at Corinthians, amen, by letting them know, so because we have this, in these weak, amen, in these temporal, amen, earthen vessels, in these clay jars, amen, we have this great and, 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 and powerful part of God, this light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, since that has now been buried in us, amen, these, these earthen vessels, amen, the only way, amen, we are going amen, to be able to carry, amen, this across the finish line is if we understand that the excellency of the power, what, is of God and is not of us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And what do I mean by that? I mean that once you have this not light of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, once you have this knowledge of the Lord, amen, glory be to God, once you have this um, treasure that, that God has given us and it is in these earthen vessels, 
amen, the, 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 the treasure that we have, amen, is, is too much, amen, for this vessel, amen, to keep and to hold without the power of God. So Paul, amen, begins to explain to us then that we are troubled on every side as he is. He is troubled on every side. But being troubled on every side, why is he troubled on every side? Because he has this, 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 this excellency, amen, this knowledge of the glory of God living on the inside, amen. And so this causes, amen, some conflict. Yes, Lord. The Bible says those that would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. This causes conflict. It causes conflict, amen, with our outside world, with the environment that we're trying to interact in, amen. But it also causes conflict, amen, amen, with ourselves on the inside. Glory be to God. So Paul says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. What is he saying? He's saying the trouble comes. The trouble comes and it's on every side. Hallelujah. But we're not distressed. So even though we are aware of the trouble, as Paul was aware of the trouble, the trouble that came, amen, because of the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the trouble that came because he knew Christ, amen, trouble came, and though he was troubled on every side, he was aware of the trouble that was surrounding him, but though he was troubled on every side, he was not in distress. For our young people today, we want you to know that even you, Amen. Amen. You could be in elementary school or junior high school or high school. Once you know Jesus Christ, if you, since you know Jesus Christ, since you know Jesus Christ, amen, you are not immune to trouble. You are not immune to to, to trials. You are not immune to temptations. Amen. But while we may be troubled on every side, Paul said, we are not distressed. And while we may be perplexed, while we may, amen, sometimes, amen, be perplexed, a little confused about which way to go. We're not in despair. And while he says we're persecuted, while we're persecuted or teased or bullied or 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 or, or in conflict with our environment because of the stand that we take for Jesus, or because of the fact simply that Jesus lives in us, amen, and, and because of this, amen, even though we are persecuted, we're not forsaken. We're not left alone. We're cast down, but not destroyed. And so Paul is setting this up for us to see, amen, that the fact that we are carrying around, amen, this knowledge of Jesus, this relationship with Jesus, amen, this, this, this personal connection with Jesus, while we are carrying that around in these earthen vessels, while we are carrying that around, amen, in these, in these human bodies, amen, while we are carrying that around in these weak and, and flawed shells, Glory be to God. Amen. We are not destroyed. And verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that the life also of Jesus Christ might be made manifest in our bodies. What does that mean? That the life of Christ, that the life that Christ lived, amen, that the life that Christ is, glory be to God, through the person of his Holy Spirit, amen, through the person of our Lord and Savior, amen, that lives within us, hallelujah, glory be to God, is manifest in our bodies. So getting to the point, he says, verse 16, for which cause we faint not. We faint not. We don't faint. Hallelujah. We don't lose heart. And we don't lose heart because we know that that same God that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also raise us up by Jesus Christ himself. So young people, the reason we don't lose heart is because, amen, we're looking past where we are, amen, to the finish line. When we're in school and we're studying really hard and we're and we're, we've got to do, amen, our homework, and we've got to do our classwork assignments, and we've got to do our reports. We do that, amen, with an aim toward the future, because one day, if we do all of our reports, if we get all of our assignments done, if we do all of our homework, if we get everything done, one day we're going to walk across the stage, and we're going to graduate, and we're going to get our diploma. Well, as far as this is concerned, in our Christian uh, journey, young folks, amen, we are able in verse 16 to not faint because we are looking, amen, forward, amen, to glory. We're looking forward to heaven, amen. We're looking forward to that great reward. So what? So we faint not. We don't faint. We don't quit. We don't lose heart. Glory be to God. There's going to be times in the journey, amen, where you'll be tempted to throw up your hands. There will be times, amen, in this journey with the Lord, amen, where you'll be tempted, amen, to turn your back. Amen. There will be times in this journey, amen, where you'll be tempted to say, I quit. Glory be to God. But I like the language of Paul. He's saying, don't lose heart. Don't faint in your heart. Because once we begin to lose um, heart on the inside of ourselves, once we begin to, amen, faint on the inside of ourselves, amen, once we begin to, amen, feel like we cannot do it, once we begin to think that we cannot go on, once we begin to think that I, I, I've got to give up, amen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop because it's getting too hard, amen, I just want you to know, amen, that, that, that we cannot lose heart, because that's when our downward spiral, amen, will begin, so we cannot lose heart, we can't lose heart because we are, amen, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, so don't lose heart, life, Amen. We, 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 if the Lord bless us, amen, we have a, 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 a blessed, we'll have a, a long life. The scripture talks about, amen, three score and ten, amen, which is 70 years. And if we look at where we are now, uh, for many of our young people, it may seem like we have a long way to go. Amen. And all along that journey, Amen. There are going to be some things that come our way that may disappoint us. There are going to be some things that come our way in this life, amen, that may break our heart. There's going to be some things that come our way in this life, amen, that may hurt us, amen, cause us to grieve, amen. There are going to be some things, amen, within our control based on the choices that we've made, but then there are also going to be some things beyond our control that have nothing to do with choices we make, amen, but things acting upon us, amen. But the thing I want to leave you with today, amen, is that you what? 
don't faint, and don't lose heart. So he says here, but though our outward man perish, and this is the thing that I want to make sure I get across to uh, my young folks, because us older folks, we realize that, hey man, with a, with a stark and accurate realization, hey man, that the moment we were born, we began to die. Amen. So Paul is saying, amen, for which cause we faint not. We're not going to faint, amen. We're not going to faint, amen, though our outward man perish. From the day we were born, saints, we began to die. From the day we were born, our bodies began to deteriorate. Amen. What, what, what an oxymoron that is, amen, that while we're growing, Amen. While we are, while we are getting big, and while we are looking at ourselves from year to year, we can see how we're growing and how we're maturing. Amen. That at the same time, Amen, we're dying. Glory be to God. At the same time, Amen. Glory be to God. Our outward man is perishing, and while our outward man perishes. Amen. Especially in the Christian context of going through, amen, our trials and our tribulations and our persecutions. Amen. While our outward man is perishing, amen, while we struggle, amen, from day to day, while our outward man is perishing, amen, while we deal with the situations of life, amen, whether we're five or 50 or 75, while our outward man is perishing, Amen. Glory be to God. When we know the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, our inward man, amen, begins to become renewed, hallelujah, day by day. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Our inward man is renewed day by day while the outward man perishes. And the way the scripture, amen, is trying to explain it is that the, 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 the decrease from the outward man perishing, amen, amen, somehow transfers over, amen, and becomes the increase for the inward man's renewal. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So that, so that the things that we're struggling with, hallelujah, that the things that are seem to cause us the problems that are causing us the challenges, amen, from the outside perspective, amen, that becomes the fuel, amen, that becomes the, the food, amen, that becomes the raw resource, amen, that is being used by the inward man to grow and be renewed. Glory be to God. In trying to deal with this oxymoron, Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Trying to deal with this. Amen. When we look at scripture, now we can see it making sense where Paul is saying it seems like, amen, when I am weak, I'm strong. Amen. Glory be to God. What are you saying, Paul? When my outward man is weak, when my flesh is weak, glory be to God. Hallelujah. When my body is weak, Amen. When my when my when my external constitution does not feel like going on anymore. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Then I am strong. There's something, amen, that begins to speak to the inner man. There's something that begins to speak, amen, to the to the to the spirit, amen, the, to the soul of a man. Amen. There's something that begins to speak, amen, that will then allow us, hallelujah, to press past. Amen. What would appear to be the limitations of this flesh. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When I am weak on the outside, when I am weak in the flesh, when I am weak in my body, glory be to God. Then the Lord, amen, amen, makes me strong on the inside. Oh, glory be to God. And that thing that's on the inside, hallelujah, which powers, begins to power the outside. Oh, glory be to God. When my steps don't want to take another step, Hallelujah. Then it's the thing on the inside. It's the strength of the Lord on the inside. Amen. That makes me take another step. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. If you've ever fell down real good and hurt yourself. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
and you felt like you had no more strength. Amen. And you just wanted to sit there and you just wanted to lay there and you just wanted to wallow. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then something on the inside. Amen. The Lord's strength began to show up. Amen. In the person of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord began to use what was happening on the outside. Amen. To power the inside. Glory be to God. And before you know it. Hallelujah, you're struggling to get to your feet, amen. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And before you know it, you're standing, amen. And it's something, amen, on the inside that has been renewed, amen. It's nothing but the power of God. That's why Paul was able to say, when I am weak, amen, on the outside, when I am weak, amen, in my flesh, when I am weak, amen, even in my mind, when I am weak, Amen. In my carnality. Amen. Then, guess what? Then the Lord, amen, he makes me strong. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Ooh, hallelujah. You see, you see, you see, sometimes, amen, we got to look at this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. The way the Lord looks at us. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to look at this thing and understand, hallelujah, that the reason, amen, we don't faint, amen, is because of the grace of God, amen, that is spoken about in verse 15, amen. I was trying to keep this thing to a conversation, amen, and I'm, I'm still trying to keep it to a conversation, amen, but I'm starting to get it just, just excited all on the inside. I was trying to be cool, y'all, but I, I'm just getting excited now because the Bible says, amen, that, 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 that it was through this abundant grace, Amen. That the glory of God abounded, abounded. Amen. And this is the reason we faint not. We don't faint because of the grace of God and the glory of God. Amen. That abounds. Hallelujah. When we think about it. Hallelujah. It's like the weather today. It's like when it snows outside. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we build a big old snowman. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. When we build that snowman, we put the eyes in and we put the carrot in for the nose and we put the buttons on the body. Amen. To represent, amen, that he's wearing a, a, a coat or something. And we wrap a scarf around his, around his neck. Amen. But the snowman, amen, it looks big and it looks giant and it looks looming. Hallelujah. And that's how our trials and tribulations seem from time to time. Glory be to God. They seem bigger than we are. Amen. They seem, they seem larger than we are. They seem stronger than we are. Amen. Like that big old snowman. Glory be to God. Oh, glory. And I'm here to tell you, amen, that that snowman is big and daunting. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As long as the temperature remains at 32 degrees or lower. Hallelujah. But glory be to God when God shows up. Glory be to God. And when God begins to raise the temperature in the room. Hallelujah. When God shows up. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And God begins to allow his grace and mercy and his power, amen, to sustain you. And when God shows up and God begins to allow, hallelujah, his grace and his word to remind you, amen, when God shows up and God begins to become strong in your life and in your mind and in your being, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What happens, amen, when God shows up? It's like turning up the temperature on the snowman. Hallelujah. And before you know it, that thing that had you bound, glory, that thing that was a big, amen, and hard and seemed to be a movable snowman, amen, as the Lord turns up the heat, as only he can, uh, that snowman will begin to melt. Uh, that problem, amen, will begin to dissolve. And before you know it, the buttons have slid all off. Uh, the nose has fallen off to the ground. Amen. The scarf is soaking wet. Glory be to God. After a while, amen, 
that snowman is only half the size of what it was as the glorious light of the Lord. Amen. The glorious power of the Lord, the glorious presence of the Lord, amen, begins, amen, to melt that snowman, begins to work on that problem, amen, as he strengthens you. And before long, after a while and by and by, what was a big problem, amen, what was a, a big obstacle, amen, what was a big gigantic thing, amen, amen, especially in the nighttime, amen, when the shadows get to playing their tricks, what was a big thing, glory be to God, God has melted into a puddle, glory, and you are able in your victory, amen, to jump on the puddle and splash it around so that what was once a big and daunting snowman, amen, is now nothing, amen, but a puddle to play in, amen, to jump around in, glory be to God. I'm so glad today, amen, that Paul looked at this thing and he said, but I will light affliction, oh, glory be to God, which is but for a moment, amen, working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What are you saying, Paul? Hallelujah. Well, what I'm saying is as we grow in this thing and as we understand what the Lord is saying to us, amen, when things, amen, come along in our lives, Amen. Like, like, like the storm yesterday in Mahern that caused so much inconvenience. Amen. Amen. Like the physical things or the spiritual things. Glory be to God. What we get to do, <laughs> hallelujah, is we get to pull out, amen, our spiritual scales. Glory be to God. And when Paul put out his spiritual scales, amen, what he did was he put, amen, he put trouble on the scale. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he put pain on the scale. Glory be to God. And he put sickness on the scale. Glory be to God. Amen. He put affliction on the scale. Glory be to God. And he put trouble on the scale. Glory be to God. And after a while, amen, after he put all of his problems and all of his situations on the scale, amen, it looked like, amen, the afflictions, amen, was outweighing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What was going on in his life. Glory. Amen. But what Paul did. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. As Paul, amen, looked in the word of God. As we should look in the word of God. And he raised his sights from where he was. Amen. To where he would be. Amen. And when he took that, amen, the scales that had all of the afflictions and all of the trials and all of the tribulations. Amen. And he began to add, amen, the joy of the Lord. Oh, glory. And he began to add, hallelujah, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And he began to add, amen, the fact that all his sins were forgiven and he had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, glory. And he began to add, Amen. The promise, amen, of God, amen, of eternal life. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. We begin to add the fact that he was in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. And he began to add the fact, amen, that one day, hallelujah, he would inherit a home, amen, not weighed with hands, eternal in the heavens. Oh, glory. Amen. And one day, amen, he would see God as he is. Oh, glory. And so it became that this side would seem so heavy and seem, amen, so much, amen, in this life, amen, was now only a light affliction when it was compared to the glory which would be revealed in us. So what am I saying to you today, saints? What I'm saying, amen, is don't faint, amen, because our light afflictions Amen. The problems that you may face in life, the disappointments that you may face in life, young people. Amen. How the heartache that you may face in life. Glory be to God. Amen. When we look, amen, at all that God has given us. Amen. Hallelujah. When we look at all that God has provided to us. Amen. It's only a light affliction. And finally, amen, he says in verse 18, amen, while we look not at the things which are seen, 
amen, but at the things which are not seen. Glory be to God. What are you saying, Paul? And I want y'all to hear me, young people. Hallelujah. What Paul, amen, is trying to get us to do is he's trying to, amen, get us, amen, to focus, amen, on the things which are not seen. I like his language here. Amen. He says that um, these things work for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. It's a far more exceeding weight. And how did it become that way, Paul said? Because while we were looking not at the things which are seen, he said, I wasn't I, on this side of the scale to get there. I wasn't looking at the things that I could see, but I was looking at the things that I couldn't see. Glory be to God. Now, 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 for those of you, amen, in the room, amen, that are wondering why Paul used this language, amen, the first question that comes to mind, amen, is Paul, how, amen, can you see things which are not seen? Glory be to God. How is you saying here, while we look not at the things which are seen, Hallelujah. Now that makes sense, Paul, because we can see the things which are seen and we can understand not looking at the things which are seen. But why is you talking about what we're looking at the things which are not seen? Oh, glory be to God. Paul, how are you seeing the things which are not seen? Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How are you seeing the things? which are not seen, because he said the things that are seen are temporary. Hallelujah. If you can see the trouble, it's temporary. Glory be to God. If you can see, amen, the, the grief, it's temporary. Hallelujah. If you can see the problem, it's temporary. The persecution is temporary. Even the people that are causing the problem is temporary. Amen. While we not look not at the things which are seen. So Paul is saying, don't look at what you can see. Hallelujah. But I want you to look at what you can't see. Glory be to God. Well, how, hallelujah, Paul, do you expect me, amen, to see the things which I cannot see? How do you expect me, amen, to see the things which are invisible? How do you expect me, amen, to see the things, amen, glory be to God, amen, which are eternal? Well, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, Paul is telling us, amen, that you got to see that, amen, with the eyes of faith. Amen. You got to see that, amen, with that, with that eye that is single. Amen. You got to see that, amen, with the eye, amen, of belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. How are we going to see the things that are not seen? Amen. We're going to see it, amen, because we believe. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to see heaven. Amen. Because we believe what the Lord said about heaven. Amen. We're going to have his peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Because, amen, we believe, amen, that he has a peace that passes all understanding. We're going to see joy, amen, that you cannot see. Amen. Because he told us that joy was coming in the morning. Amen. We're going to see, amen, glory be to God, healing. Amen. Because healing is in his wings. Amen. We're going to see. Amen. Hallelujah. All of those things. Amen. That are eternal and invisible. Amen. Glory be to God. And we're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says to us. Amen. While we look not at the things which are seen. We're not looking at the things which are seen. Hallelujah but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Listen. The things which are seen are temporal. Yes. They're going to pass away. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, if you can see it, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. If you can see it, it is temporary. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time for those in the back, up in the balcony. If you can see it, it is temporary. Which means if you can see it, it's going away from here. Yeah. If you can see it, it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it could be a person. If you can see it, it's temporary. 
So that's what Paul is doing. He's trying to get our minds moved, amen, for focus on the things, not on the things that we cannot see. Jesus. On those things that are eternal uh -huh. in nature and are eternal in the heavens. Those things that are eternal. Because if you can see it, the fact is it is temporary. Yeah. Everything your eyes can see, young people, is temporary. Come on now. I don't care what it is you're looking at. Amen. It's not going to last. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Amen. I believe, amen. This is for, amen, some of our older folks too. Amen. Anything you can see is temporary. Doesn't matter how pretty the car is. It's temporary. Doesn't matter how fine the house is. It's temporary. It doesn't matter, amen, how fine the woman is. It's temporary. Doesn't matter how fine the man is. It's temporary. Amen. At some point, all of these things are going to go away. Amen. Why? Because they're temporary. And one of the, amen, characteristics of temporary things, hallelujah, are things that you can see. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. But the Bible, amen, tells us that what? Charity never fails. Amen. His mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. As we, as we begin to walk with the Lord anew, mm. it seemed like this week all in our prayer meeting, amen, the the, the chant, the prayer was just a closer walk. Mm. That seemed to be the thing. And that closer walk, it has to start with the realization mm. that the things that are seen are temporary. Mm. Hallelujah. The things that are seen are temporary and they will go away. Yes. Amen. Mm. But as he says here, mm. but the things which are not seen yeah. are eternal. Hallelujah. Are eternal. Amen. Yes. So Paul is asking us to not faint. Don't faint. Yeah. To not give up. Mm -mm. Because the things that you see are temporary. The sickness you see is temporary. Mm. Yeah. The face you see when you look in the mirror is temporary. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But it is the eternal things the eternal. that are unseen. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. The eternal things Amen. that are unseen that have that eternal weight, eternal weight. of glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In one way he put it, he said that he reckoned that the sufferings glory, glory. of this present time mm -hmm. were not to even be compared. I know. I know. I know sometimes the suffering that we're going through are so enormous, are so huge. They take up all of our vision. But he said that the sufferings of the present time are not to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. So, so what does that tell us, saints? What does that tell us, young people? Amen. That tells us that sometimes we are going to be touched by suffering. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. You're not going to be able to pray your way out of, out of every suffering or every sickness or every illness. It, it, you just... It, it's just not designed that way, even though that is a doctrine, amen, that seems to be popular nowadays, amen. But 
we're all going to have some suffering. We're all going to have some heartache. We're all going to have some headache. We're all going to have some pain. Amen. This is, this is, this is par for the course for being human, for being born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Mm. Amen. Mm. But the promise is that it's not even comparable mm. to the glory, hallelujah, which shall be revealed in us. Yeah. Amen. Mm. So if you're suffering, pray about your suffering, and we will pray with you, amen, that that suffering will come to an end, or that God will provide his comfort and his peace, or that God will heal you, or that God will set you free, amen, or that, or that amen, God will deliver. Yes, he is our God, and yes, amen, we have, amen, that right, amen, glory be to God, to call on him in our hour of need. But I don't want you to think, yes. amen, that just because you became a Christian, amen, that all of a sudden, amen, life is going to be a tiptoe through the tulips. Mm. Hallelujah. But he tells us here, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. Know that through it all, hallelujah, through it all, mm -hmm. the sufferings of this time, mm. the grief of this time, the trials, the tribulations, the persecutions is not, cannot even be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us mm -hmm. at that day. Amen. God bless you Amen. and have a smile upon you.